Hello my friends, there's only one thing I love more than revenge stories, and it's reading stories about people saying that they know the owner when they really don't. Like it's some sort of threat to get what they want. Guys, it's been a while since I've done an episode like this, and a few people have emailed me some stories, and I'm here to share them with you today. There's gonna be four stories in this episode, with the last one being pretty long and well worth the listen to, guys. So buckle up, my friends, because this ride is filled with cringe and awkward feels. And oh, many of you have asked how to send me stories, and I've left my email in the description box below. I hope you guys stay for the stories today, and hit that subscribe button for future stories. This first story is titled, I Know the Owner. I spent four years working at a hardware store while in college, and was reminded by this particular mishap during an exchange with a coworker the other day. I figured it fits well here. We've all heard this, or some variation of this, at one time or another. I know the manager. I know the owner. I know this person. I know that person. It's basically a given when you work in retail. People naturally want deals, etc., and throw this around like it's actually a threat, but... Honestly, most of the time when someone knows the owner, they never use it as a threat. Anyway, the hardware store I used to work at was a family business. Four brothers owned two stores between them all. The one I worked at was a father and son deal. The father, one of the initial brothers mentioned above, was the owner, and his son worked as the manager. I was running a register, and had been working there less than a year when I was confronted by a very angry man, who... I'll refer to as VAM for Very Angry Man. Something to note, the owner and the manager shared a rather easily recognizable last name. For the sake of anonymity, I'm going to change them a bit, but I'll refer to them as Bill, the dad and the owner, and Chuck, the manager and son, Carmichael. The Very Angry Man plops down a bunch of plumbing parts, pipe, glue, etc. on my counter and said, I want to return all of this. None of it worked. I said, Okay, no problem, sir. Can I see the receipt, please? The angry man stared at me and said, I don't have it. Me, noticing that the return is going to be for a large chunk of money, about $300, said, Oh, okay, um, let me call my manager real quick. The man grumbles, and the owner's son, the manager, comes over and says, Sir, I'll take you over here at this register, so he can clear out the line behind you. I proceeded to chunk up the line pretty quickly while keeping a loose ear on the conversation between the very angry man and my manager. It grew heated, and eventually, the very angry man yelled something about wanting to see the manager. Which was funny, because the manager Chuck was telling him to pretty much pound sand. Once the line was gone, I had a front row seat to the argument. The very angry man says, They let me return the stuff at the other location. Manager replies, I'm sorry, I can't take these. Some are used, and some are parts we don't even sell in our stores. I have no record of the purchase, and I hope you can understand that we can't just refund you the parts without proof of receipt. The very angry man then says, I know the owner. I'll go right to him with this. I know Bill Carmichael. We're actually really good friends. Don't make me call him. My manager responds, Oh, Bill's my dad. How do you know him? If you're such good friends, how come I've never seen you over at the barbecues my dad hosts every so often? The very angry man, blankly staring as the gears turned, said, Well, your dad will hear from me. He grabbed his crap, stammered a few curses, and left. It was early in the day, and the owner rolled in a few hours later before lunch. We all had a good laugh out of it. And the best part, the manager had gotten very angry man's name from the credit card, and not only did the owner not know him, and has never seen him in his life, but this guy was banned from our store, and the other store, and he probably earned it. I love this story. When you mess up so bad, that you just keep running with your lie, even though you know you're wrong, well... Your dad will hear from me. I bet he will, sir. You conniving thief. Trying to return things that OP said they didn't even sell in their stores. I'm shaking my head, sir. This next story is titled, How Do You Know Me? 
So this happened way back when I worked at a pizza place. We did takeaway and delivery, and there were a few seats where customers could sit while they waited for the orders, but there were no tables, so you couldn't sit down to eat them. On this particular day, the owner John and I were working in the store. My usual co-worker had called in sick, so John was filling in. Halfway through the day, a Karen walked in. At first, everything was just peachy. Karen asked for takeaway, gave her order, paid, and I made it. When the pizza was cooked, we boxed it up and gave it to her. Karen sat down and opened the box, obviously intending to eat it there. Now, John didn't allow customers to eat in the shop because we're not a restaurant, and staff had a dozen things to do, which didn't include cleaning up messes left by customers. I was making an order for delivery, so John went up to Karen, and I was all ears as you can imagine. John says, Sorry miss, you can't eat here. Karen responded, Oh, I can eat here. I've done it many times. I know the owner Jack personally, and he said I could eat here if I wanted. John says, Oh really? How do you know me? And by the way, I'm the owner of this place, and my name's John. Karen went bright red, closed the box, and left without saying a word. John and I cracked up with laughter. Guys, I've said it once, and I'll say it again. If you're gonna pull this little ruse, at least get the name of the owner right. There's nothing, nothing more embarrassing when you're aggressive and say that you know the owner's name is Jack when it's John. Big oof, Karen. Big oof. This next story's titled, Who Did You Say Your Father Was? A few years ago, I was working for my aunt in the two convenience stores she owns in town. It was a temporary thing that stretched two years, and every day was the same. I'd punch in, work, and punch out. My father was pretty well known around town for all the years he worked in automotive as a parts store manager and mechanic. One day, I was behind the counter waiting on customers, and someone came up to the counter, and as I was scanning their items, I noticed they had a fountain drink in their hand, sipping on it. So I went to ring them up, and I'm interrupted. He said, Don't ring this up. I'm family, and I get these for free. I'm related to the owner. Since it's my aunt's business, if you're related, such as an uncle, an aunt, niece, or nephew, she usually lets fountain drinks and slushes go for free, since drinks don't cost much. I replied, Oh, okay, um, what's your relation to the owner? Mind you, I know my aunts, uncles, and cousins very well. He looks at me right in the eyes and says, I'm Brett, Joe's youngest son. Now, I'm confused because I'm Brett and Joe is my father. I couldn't help but sit there for a couple of minutes with a look of disbelief because, again, I'm Brett and Joe is my father. So I decided to have some fun with it. Before I go on, I want to note that the guy who's using this line is in his late 30s, so there's no way he's remotely related to us, because all my cousins are quite young still. Many haven't even graduated high school yet. I look over to the store manager, who's my cousin, and say, Hey, um, does this guy look like Joe's youngest son? She took a moment to get a good look at him, and says, He's Joe's youngest son? The guy got a huge smile on his face, like he had just won a free car or had gotten away scot-free with a crime. And he says, Yep, Joe's my dad. The store manager said to me, I didn't know you have a younger brother with the same name. Except, he looks almost 40. How does that work? He stood there for a moment with the most confused look on his face, mixed with a good amount of shock, not seeming to realize that the name on my name tag in Big, bold letters read, Brett. I looked over to my coworker and said, You hear that? I have a brother with the same name as me. Isn't that great? But it's odd because he looks so old. None of us could believe that this guy hasn't caught on. So I have to look him dead in the eye and tell him, Nice to meet you. My name's Brett. Pointing to my name tag, I'm Joe's youngest son. He looked around all of us, finally understood, and just stammered. I ring up the dollar drink. He paid and left, with us still laughing. 
Oh my goodness. I can literally feel the awkwardness from the story as I read it. People will say anything to save even a dollar, I guess. I still have no idea how some people just go around thinking this works. And then they're caught in the act. But I do have a question for you guys, and I want to know in the comments. I always think it's odd when people start eating their groceries before they've paid for it. Is this a no-no, or is it allowed? This last story is titled, Give me the employee discount, or get fired. Like most people, I've had the wonderful experience of working in retail. In my case, I worked at a newly opened jewelry store in one of the city's larger malls. This store was part of a corporate chain across the globe, named after the original founder. The store rhymes with Michael Thrill. But the particular location I worked in was the first one opened in our country, so it wasn't extremely popular, though people have heard of it. I was one of the youngest working in the store, being freshly graduated out of high school. I was working the front on this particular day, and customers had been coming in steadily. I was cleaning the display cases with a rag and glass cleaner when this one lady came in. Let's call her Karen, because why not? She was probably in her early 40s. Platinum blonde pixie haircut, big sunglasses that covered half of her face, leopard print purse and matching shoes, and clothes that were way too fashionably young for her. Just one look at her, and you knew it screamed midlife crisis. I had stopped myself momentarily to make eye contact with her and gave her a smile, acknowledging that I knew she was there, and to give her a few moments to peruse the merchandise. Keep in mind, there's other staff on hand, and they're helping other customers. I'm in the front of the counters where the customers usually are, but I'm wearing all black just like the staff, and I have a giant name tag on it with my name, Emily, printed across the front. I finally approach her, putting the rag and spray bottle down and said, Hello. She turned her head briefly towards me and responded, Hi, how are you today, I ask. It was part of our training to build good rapport with customers before bombarding them with questions of what they want to buy. She said, Good. Thanks. Her answers were short and curt, which threw me off a little. She took off her sunglasses and looked around and tried to wave down one of my coworkers. She said, Can I get some help here? My coworker Mark looked up at her, glanced at me, and then back to her and said, I'm sorry, I'm with a customer right now, but Emily right there will help you out. Karen did that thing where she brought her sunglasses halfway off her face to look me up and down and said, Her? Ugh, I guess. Great, it was gonna be one of those customers. Keeping my best customer service smile, I asked her, Anything I can help you with? I want to look at this. It started with me showing her a lot of rings, bracelets, necklaces, watches, etc. She was very nonchalant, like it looked like she had no interest in any one thing, and then maybe have interest in another. It took way longer than it should. Eventually, she settled on this diamond tennis bracelet and asked me how much it was. I took a peek at the price tag and told her it was $2,500. And Karen says, Great, what's my price on it though? I was confused and said, I'm sorry? How much is this bracelet after my discount is applied? It took every little ounce in my power not to show any emotion on my face. I didn't know this lady at all, but she acted like she was some big shot. I told her, I'm sorry, there currently isn't a sale going on the bracelets. She scoffed at me, scoffed, leaned over and whispered, Ugh, I know there isn't for everybody else but I should be getting a discount on this. At the risk of unleashing hell, I dared to ask, do, do you get discounts here? Maybe she was an employee at some other location, but since we're the only store in the country, it was unlikely. And she said, are you serious? You don't know who I am? She started to raise her voice at me at this point, and I said, no, I don't. Ugh, hello, I'm Karen. I'm supposed to get the family discount. I know the owner. My coworker Mark thankfully excused himself from the other customers and came over to help me. Hi ma'am, is there an issue here? Karen started getting all huffy, going through her purse to look for something, probably to make herself look busy, and says, Yes, 
there is a problem here. I always get a discount when I shop at my uncle's stores, and this lady isn't giving it to me. Are you going to fix this problem? Mark, as smooth as he was, faked interest and said, Oh, who's your uncle? Karen responds, Michael Thrill. Hello, I'm his niece. You'd better give me that family discount on the bracelet, or I'm calling my uncle and complaining and you're getting fired. She started waving her cell phone at us. Mark replied, Oh, you're his niece. I'm so sorry, I didn't know. Mark grabbed the bracelet from me and started to move to the computer and ramming away at the keys. I stood frozen, not knowing what was going on. And Mark says, Hold on here, let me just pull up the discount screen. Karen crossed her arms and rolled her eyes at me and said, See, that's how you're supposed to treat your special customers. Mark, who is probably one of the best managers I've ever had, started to talk louder, so loud to the point it was comical, and says, Oh, um, how is Michael? It's been a few days since I've talked to him. Is he enjoying his trip up in the mountains? Karen responded, Uh-huh, he's having so much fun with his family, skiing and sightseeing and visiting the hot springs. Oh, that's so interesting. Considering we're a corporately owned chain of stores and Michael Thrill doesn't even live in this country, I'll never forget the way Mark's face just turned into a deadpan stare at her when he said that. It took Karen a few silent moments to register what happened. When she realized, her reaction was just golden. And she says, What? No, um, my uncle, uh, mountains. And just like that, she took off, her face as red as a tomato. The relief set in that I didn't have to deal with that crazy face lady who thought she could just demand a discount by knowing the owner. Bye, Karen. Oh my goodness, I'm 100% certain that OP was referring to the store called Michael Hill. It's so funny how Karen didn't know it was a corporate chain. Thank you for emailing me the story, OP, and making my day. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode today and are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss future stories like this. If you want to submit your own stories, the link is in the description box below. And if you want to keep binging on these stories about people saying that they know the owner, it's right here. I'll see you guys in the next one.